Kobe Bryant is one of the greatest scorers and fiercest competitors that the NBA has ever seen. With a career spanning 20 seasons, he appeared in 18 All-Star games and won five NBA championships. But when asked about his story, he talked about his time in Italy, playing a game called Mini Hoops. He said that practices in Italy focused on building foundational skills, passing, dribbling, shooting, and as a result, rarely did five-on-five -five scrimmages with his teammates. Growing up in Italy, Kobe said he learned how to play basketball the right way by focusing on fundamentals first. That experience set the foundation for his career, shaped the way that he viewed the game, and put him on the path of becoming one of the greatest basketball players of all time. It's important to think about how this cultural exchange impacted the life of this icon. Now, cultural exchanges, they can be profoundly impactful, even if you're not trying to become a superstar basketball player. Tanahasi Coates wrote, uh, wrote in his book, Between the World and Me, about him visiting France at the age of 30. He talked about being there, knowing limited French, and having to learn how to navigate the French subway system and French currency. But more importantly, he talked about how his time in France presented a schema change for him and opened up his eyes to new perspectives of both the world and his own identity. He says he wished he would have traveled and had that experience sooner. Whether as a kid or as an adult, these experiences became a part of Kobe and Tanahasi's identity and impacted how they saw the world. It's an idea that people call constructivism. The theory is that we construct our own realities through our own personal experiences. And whenever you have a new experience, that experience either assimilates into the reality you constructed for yourself, or you have to reconstruct your reality in order to accommodate this new experience and the new knowledge that came with it. Constructivism is something you can apply to as something as close and as personal as your cultural identity. When you think about your cultural identity, you might think about your birth culture or the culture of where your parents or your grandparents are from. But the interactions you have with other environments and other cultures are essential for developing this reality that you construct for yourself. At the time, Kobe and Tanahasi they might not have realized the impact that these cultural experiences were gonna have on them. Yet, they became a part of who they were and aided in personal growth that was a catalyst to their success. I would also like to attribute my personal growth and my cultural experiences to what has inspired me to be courageous and open to new experiences. And I would like to encourage you all to seek out these opportunities whenever you can in your own lives. Now, I know what you're thinking. Inflation lately? Cost of trip and trying to go to Europe, to Africa, even to the next town over. Who's trying to do that right now? But inter international cultures and international cultural experiences don't have to come from just traveling. They can come from simply interacting with someone that's from somewhere that you're not. I'm a proud product of an HBCU. But coming to Prairie View a and University in Prairie View, Texas, that was a major culture shock for me. As a black man who claimed to be from Houston, I was surprised at how unfamiliar I was with my new home. For those who are unaware, an HBCU is an historically black college or university which was founded during American Reconstruction to serve African-American students. Because let's just say the opportunities were limited back then. Now, I realized how unfamiliar I was with my new home whenever I was asked a pretty simple question. Where are you from? For most people, that's a question they don't even have to think about their response to. But for me, it was a question I realized I didn't have an answer for. See, I grew up internationally and simply just identified as being an American. Whenever I had to be more specific, I would tell people I was from Houston simply because my parents were from Houston. And people generally were satisfied with that response. But what I didn't know is that people from Houston didn't actually say that they were from Houston. And they instead said what specific suburb or what specific neighborhood of Houston they're from. 
So when I would tell someone at Prairie View that I was from Houston, they would look at me and go, oh, what part? Excuse me? There are parts? Or they'd ask, oh, what high school did you go to? And I have to explain, I didn't go to high school, middle school, or elementary school in Houston. Puzzled, they would look at me and say, well, not, you must not be from Houston then. Where, where are you really from? And then I would have to outline all the places that I had lived and explain to them that really I was from a little bit of everywhere. Despite the puzzled looks, I felt excited because I knew my previous cultural experiences were gonna help me navigate this new space that I found myself in. And this new space that I found myself in was gonna add to the reality that I constructed for myself. I grew up as a third culture kid, which is defined as someone who spends a portion of their formative years outside of their parents' culture. As a result, multiple cultures and multiple identities are merged together to form a third cultural kid's personal and cultural identity. Growing up constantly on the move, I was thrown headfirst into these different cultural situations, whether I wanted them or not. By the time I graduated high school, I lived in five different countries in four different continents. See, I was born in Fairfax, Virginia, but I only lived there for less than a year before moving to Munich, Germany for the next three years. I don't really remember too much of my time there other than the fact that it seemed like it was always really cold and snowy. From there, we moved to the Manila, the Philippines, for the next four years, moving somewhere that felt always really cold, somewhere that always felt super hot. But one of the things I attribute to my time in Manila for is where the love for one of my favorite foods began, lumpia, which, if that's something you've never had before, I highly recommend it. Your taste buds will thank you later. From there, we moved to a small town outside of Washington, D.C. called Bristol, Virginia. And although I was really young, I knew that my time in Manila and in Munich and the lessons I had learned interacting with these different cultures and talking to people that were different than me already had a major impact. I know this because while I was in Bristol, I had made two really good friends, one of which was half Filipino and the other one was someone who had just moved back to Bristol from Germany. From there, my family and I continued our world tour, moving to Nairobi, Kenya for four years, and then Cairo, Egypt for two years, further exposing me to new ideas, new cultures, and new ways of life. But really, all that was preparing me for my life at an HBCU. Now, most HBCU students don't get the opportunity to experience international culture outside of their regions. For HBCU students, Roadblocks exist that can limit their ability to partake in these cultural exchanges outside of their homes and institutions. The opportunity to do a study abroad exists for college students, but for HBCU students, those opportunities might not be accessible. According to the Institute of International Education, only 3.4% of students at HBCU students during their undergraduate career complete a study abroad, compared to 10.4% of students across all institutions nationally. There are many reasons for this discrepancy. Participating in a study abroad requires overcoming a high financial barrier, which can limit students' abilities to participate. Some students just might not see the benefit of, part of participating in a study abroad, which prevents them from making the investment. While still, other students who have never traveled internationally before might have fears about the experience. The inability to desire something that you've never had limits HBCU students' ability to partake in these type of cultural exchanges. You can't want something that you can't see. All these things can limit students and HBCU students from limiting and building a third culture of their own. Plus, traveling and going to college, that's a new experience on its own. Between running around trying to figure out where your classes are, to trying to decide if the major that you picked is really what you want to major in. You're constantly adjusting to the new environment that you found yourself in. To try and help you with that adjustment, you're gonna rely on all the experiences that you've had until then. However, in doing so, you risk limiting yourself to your epistemic bubble, where you only interact with people with similar backgrounds and experiences as you. 
going through life, never being able to see things from different point of views, never being able to develop empathy for people in other parts of the world. Heck, we have a hard enough time developing empathy for people that aren't on our social media bubbles or that we're not following on Twitter. The inability to develop and see things from other people's perspectives, their strengths and weaknesses, their hopes and fears, and their dreams and realities put us at risk of going through life with a fixed mindset. A fixed mindset is the idea that intelligence and talent is something that you're born with and is fixed and you can't grow. Someone with a fixed mindset might instantly lose interest in something if they don't excel at it. Someone with a fixed mindset might realize that they're passionate about something, but don't anticipate all the hardships that would come with pursuing that passion. Simply put, having a fixed mindset can cap your potential and prevent you from achieving all the things that you're capable of. And in a society where global competence is becoming expected, having that fixed mindset and missing out on the opportunities because of it can put you at a disadvantage. Now, how do we go about building our third culture? Well, first, we need to actively seek out opportunities outside of our comfort zone. If you're a student, find a study abroad or a cultural exchange program and participate. Find resources and utilize resources that can offer scholarships that can help cover the cost of the program. Talk to departments in your university that can help find programs that are relevant to you, your interests, and your major. And when you go, fully embrace the culture that you find yourself in, the people that you find yourself with, and the environment that surrounds you. The lessons that you'll learn and the perspectives that you'll gain will impact you long after the study abroad is over. And if you're not a student, then travel, but not to some resort or on a cruise that acts as a bubble of safety, but intentionally explore. Seize the opportunity, meet people, and fully embrace and immerse yourself in the culture that you find yourself in. But traveling and study abroad, they're not the only way to get these cultural experiences. Before stepping foot on a plane, you can take steps right now to start building a third culture of your own. Participate in international festivals. Watch documentaries about different cultures. Even eating and learning about new cuisines are things that you can do today to start building your third culture. Meet people who come from different backgrounds and different experiences with you, as from you, and take the time to fully embrace their heritage. While you're in college, you'll be surrounded by people that come from all walks of life. Embrace those differences. Take advantage of localized learning opportunities, which connect local issues and communities to global issues and paradigms. If you're interested in social justice, take the time to learn about how different social justice movements have impacted different areas of the world. If you're interested in climate change, learn about how environmental inequities have occurred globally as a result of climate change, or how different technolo technologies are being developed internationally to try and mitigate climate change's effects. The perspectives you'll gain will transform your personal growth, your intercultural development, and be a defining moment in your life. And finally, having these third cultural experiences will help you identify your own cultural rules and your own cultural biases. But know this, Cultural experiences and dividing, developing your third culture it is something that has actively grown and actively fostered through having these third culture and these cultural experiences. For me, my local cultural experience happened right here at PVAMU. For, most, for me, when I got to PV, I realized that I was really limited in my knowledge of black history and black culture. I could tell you about Martin Luther King and the March on Washington but I couldn't tell you about people like A. Philip Randolph or the Brotherhood of Sleeping Car Porters and what their role in the Civil Rights Movement was. I was taught that on June 1st, 1863, that the Emancipation Proclamation freed the slaves during the Civil War, but I had no idea that it was on June 19th, 1865, that more than 250,000 enslaved people were freed from Galveston, Texas, marking the official end of slavery in the United States. Galveston's right down the street from the city I was telling people I was from, and yet I had no idea. 
I took advantage of being in this new environment and tried to learn all that I could about it, experience and a skill that I had to utilize for most of my life. I took classes like Honors Colloquium, which allowed me to dive deep into my personal culture and learn about myths, stereotypes, images, films, and Western justification, master narratives of controlling the actions of African and black people. Being a part of the Honda campus also I challenged Quiz Bowl team. I was able to learn about the accomplishments and the achievements of various African Americans that I had never heard of before. And frankly, just don't get the recognition they deserve. Experiences like that help continue to build onto my third culture and help me become the person that I am today. As the world continues to globalize, you're gonna to have to interact with people who have different viewpoints from you. As a society, we're gonna to have to face problems that are gonna impact people from all across the world. In order to address these problems, we're gonna to have to be able to look at them from multiple perspectives and multiple angles. So start now towards building your third culture because by combining all these experiences and constructing this new reality, you'll be able to help shape the person that you become in the future. Now, I know I'm no Kobe Bryant. I'm definitely not going to the Hall of Fame anytime soon in the NBA. But like Kobe, who I am is a result of combining my experiences and taking the opportunity to go through, search for opportunities with an open mindset rather than a fix. But who knows? Maybe one day I'll travel to Italy, play some mini hoops, and see what happens. Thank you.